Hello everybody, welcome to episode 18. This episode was originally the second half of episode 17, which was going to be a massive like 40 minute episode um, that I decided to split into two, okay? Um, so you'll hear me talking in a second as if um, uh, we're in the middle of a video and that we've done a bunch of things this episode, so uh, just just don't worry about that, <laughs> okay? It's because it used to be, um, all, all the footage you're about to see used to be part of uh, the last episode. That's all, I just wanted to point that out. With that out of the way, hope you enjoy this episode, have fun. Okay, so we've done quite a lot this episode, um, so if you stay with me for just a bit longer, we're gonna make it so our plant objects can drop these fragments. Okay, that's the last thing we're gonna do uh, for this particular episode. We're gonna make a new function for this called drop items. All right, and you notice I've called it drop items and not drop fragments. That's because this is a more generic script that we're gonna be able to use to make any entity just drop an item. Not necessarily even when it's destroyed, uh, just whenever we need to uh, create an item drop or somewhere in the game, or a group of items to drop together. Um, and either create one in its place that does, does its little bounce or um, create several in like a little circle, right? And, and get them to sort of spread out from one another. Okay, um, so we'll write some descriptive stuff at the top here. So at desk, uh, drop items, x, y, items in square brackets, importantly. Uh, arg x, uh, arg y, arg, let's make this bigger for you as well. Let's see a bit better what's going on. Maybe not that big. Uh, uh, arg items, uh, array of items to drop. That's the only one that's not self-explanatory. Um, so yeah, we'll call this function whenever we want to drop items just by giving it a position and what items we want to drop as an array. All right, we just pass an array into the script. Uh, var items, first of all, equals array length 1D argument uh, bracket, open bracket argument two. So it's just going to tell us how many items we're actually going to drop because of however long that array is. Then if items greater than one, um, because if items are not greater than one, then we, in fact, we can write that else just right here, like <laughs> right away, because it's one line instance, create layer argument zero, x, argument one, y, uh, layer instances, and uh, the object type is argument two, or rather it is argument two, open square bracket zero, right, the, the, the first entry of the array, because it'll be an array even if it's just one, one object we want to spawn. Close bracket, semicolon. Um, so if there's just one item, uh, we, we literally just call this and just make it. All right, there's, there's no need to worry about that. Um, it's if there's more than one item that we want to drop, which we have the ability to do because we can pass in an array. So, uh, what we want to do is split them out in a kind of random circle, all right, but make them uh, like evenly split apart from one another. Because if we just gave each thing like a random, uh, a random 360 degree direction, um, you could have like all three items, like if you did three items, uh, all three just go the same direction uh, or have them or like one item go like exactly left and two go exactly right and a lot of other patterns that are, are random but don't necessarily look very good. This is the thing with randomness in game development, right? True randomness often actually doesn't look that nice <laughs> or isn't very effective when you want to create a pattern that looks nice but also looks or feels random. Um, so what we want to do is we'll, we'll take a random angle but we're going to make sure all the items are kind of split evenly um, in a circle, all right? So what we're going to do is type var angle per item equals 360 divided by items. So however many items there are, um, that will determine the space between each item, all right? So, I mean, if there was one, it would be 360, even though obviously that wasn't the case. If there's two, it would be... Um, uh, 180 degrees between each item, right? They'd be 180 degrees away from one another. If there was four, there'd be each one would be 90 degrees away from one another, and, and so on. You get the idea, right? Um, var angle 
itself equals random 360. And then we, we basically use this one random angle um, to determine where one of them goes. And then we just sort of keep adding angle per item um, to this angle for each item we want to spawn. All right, that's the long and short of it. So for var i equals zero, uh, while i is less than the number of items, if I can type, uh, i plus plus. With instance create layer argument zero, argument one, that's x and y, layer instances, object type, argument two, uh, this time open square bracket i, close square bracket, um, I guess it's whichever actual item in the array we're spawning, close bracket, close bracket. So with the thing that we've just created, direction equals underscore angle, and spud equals 0.75 uh, plus items. Even if you use this to spawn an object that doesn't have the spud variable, don't worry about it, because it'll just get created and then just not used, all right? It's not a big deal, because we're not uh, modifying a variable necessarily, we're just assigning one. So even if the spud variable doesn't exist, so you're using this to drop some other random type of entity, um, it doesn't matter if it has the spud or not, uh, or makes use of spud in any way. Uh, our fragment just happens to use spud, all right, and use that to determine uh, how quickly it, it moves in a given direction. So we can set it here. Spud equals 0 0.75 plus uh, underscore items, that is, times 0 0.1 plus random 0 0.1. All right, um, what I do here is we have a base speed of 0 0.75 that we just give to everything. Uh, this is a bit magic numbery as well. It's possible you want to set it so you can reach into fragment and, and find a speed that you want to set. And if you want each type of fragment to have different speeds, I found this to just be consistently okay for all types of fragments I've ever wanted to create or all kinds of items I've wanted to spawn. So I've not had a problem doing this as a magic number, but here it does reduce our flexibility a bit. All right. So if you want to set this up with variables, that, that's up to you. But 0.75 plus items multiplied by 0.1. So this takes the number of items that we're going to spawn and adds a bit more to the speed for each item that we have. Okay, so that's going to create a, a smaller circle for a smaller number of items, which is what you know it gets them to sort of because if you've got a lot of items, uh, if you've got like six items all spawning in a circle. Uh, they're all going to overlap uh, one another if they're at the speed that looks nice for, say, three items in a circle. Um, but by adding a bit more to the speed for every item there is, that causes them to sort of spread out and it'll make the circle bigger to accommodate for the number of items that you've dropped. All right. It'll only work up to a certain point because we're only just adding 0.1 on for each time, but yeah, it, it helps. All right. And then we just add uh, a, a random, a tiny bit of random speed as well on, on top so that they don't form quite a perfect circle. And there's just a little bit of randomness in there um, just to make it look a little nicer, in my opinion. Um, that's all there is to that. And then um, once we've made an item uh, in this loop, we do angle plus equal angle per item. So the next item to get created uh, gets whatever percentage of 360 needs adding so that they spread out in a ra in, a, in, a, in an even circle. Okay, um, that's it for that function. Um, zoom out a little so you can see the whole script at once. Then we just need to make it so that p entity can call this function. Uh, so I'm going to bring up p entity and we're going to add a couple new variables to its variable definitions window. Um, those are entity fragment count, uh, which by default will be zero, and entity fragment, um, or just entity fragment, which I get, uh, for this one we'll make the default minus one. Um, personal preference really, doesn't really matter too much. But then we're going to add the destroy event, so that if an entity is destroyed, which our plants get destroyed when they are chopped, right? So if that's the case, um, we will add a description actually. Uh, drop fragments and items, because we'll come back to items and we'll give things like a drop list that they can drop later on. Um, if 
entity fragment count greater than zero. So if you know this thing can drop fragments, fragment array equals array underscore create. Um, cool function lets us create a array with a specified default value, um, which is very helpful for situations like this. Entity fragment count uh, is the size of the array and each entry in the array we want to set as default entity fragment. All right, entity fragment going to contain the type of um, fragment we want to spawn. That's, that's really useful. That just saves us, you know, writing something like um, uh, fragment array equals um, o frag plant comma, you know, there's some, something silly like that, right? Um, saves us having to do that. Um, it just creates that array for us, all right, just by making it that many entries long, and each entry is that by default. So fragment array is that. Then simply uh, drop items x, y, fragment array, semicolon. And then, um, so that's set up, and all our other entities will currently ignore this because their entity fragment count by default is zero. But if we go to oplant, and we go to entity uh, fragment count and fragment, set fragment count to three, and entity fragment to O frag plant, and then go to plant B and do the same, uh, but we'll set count to two for this one. Uh, o frag plant, because it's a smaller plant, so it makes sense that it drops less. Run the game, uh, <laughs> ignoring those ones, we'll get rid of them in a second. Uh, you can see now when I chop the grass, uh, it shoots out little fragments. And they do three bounces, which I think looks kind of not good for the plants. Um, so I'm going to go to OFRAG plant, go to variable definitions, change bounce count to one. Okay, I'll just make it do that one uh, loop of the, the, the sine wave. Uh, you can see it already affected those ones as well. Okay, uh, one thing we might need to change actually, if let's go into over um let's get rid of, these get overwritten anyway when we do our function, so I don't think it's screwing us up, but just get rid of this if if you added it, I only added it to demonstrate for you all. But if you added this, this bit equal to indirection equals random 360, let's get rid of that, that was just a test. And then I'm gonna come back to our village, uh, if it'll let me, Nord VPN ads. Um, and get rid of those. There we go. Cool. So now if I run this and run over to our grass, splits up into little fragments and they just do one, one bounce. Possible if you want to even set the bounce to be zero, if you prefer that look. Um, We'll have a look, possibly, and they just sort of spread out from it like that. That could be a look you prefer. Up to you, play around with those numbers, play around with the other ones, like bounce speed, bounce height, the deteriorate times, whatever you like, okay? Um, it's all just about making it look nice and look how you want it to look. So I know that took a while to get through, but um, what we've created there is super powerful because that lets us create any type of fragment we want. We can just make a new child of O fragment whenever we want with a different sprite and different settings and have any type of entity when it gets destroyed, drop any type of fragment in any quantity. All right. Um, we could even do complex things where we have entities that have like custom arrays with multiple different types of fragments and, and all sorts of stuff if we really wanted. Um, but keeping it simple for now, um, this is, a, this is a pretty cool system. So thank you for watching. Hope you found this one useful, guys, and I'll catch you all next time. Hello, thank you for watching, everyone, and thank you for your patience. I'm sorry I had to kind of split this into two episodes, but I do really kind of want to avoid 
creating any more of these like massive 40 minute episodes where I can avoid them. I know some people like that style, but um, for my tastes, they are kind of a, a bit tiring to try and watch, <laughs> um, especially when you're trying to code alongside something for 40 minutes. That's, that's a lot of work, and I'd rather keep these episodes as something people can digest a little bit of the a little bit at a time, especially for people who don't necessarily have. Uh, a, a ton of uh, a free time. So thank you for being understanding, and with that in mind, I would like to give a shout out to the following cool people. That's Bowser the Dog, Zinan May, Robert Churches, Roven Darlin, Zephyr Flame, Daka Dondago, Max M, Bertie T, Relentless Rex, Do What Doobie, Jason, James Siggins, Dark Rider 0318, James L. Anderson, Hare, Hyungjin, Rupinda, Rene Dam, Scott Matthews, Leo, Pixel Mush, Tyler Hubble, Maria Celeste Oliveira Frailing, Arrow Barbarian, Cabbage Pants, Vilvertinen, Gilberto Cisneros, Figgy, Mark Burgess, John Harwood, Zach Collett, Goose, Caleb Franklin, Troy Mera, Alex Schenkel, Wilfredo Landera, Carter Green, Justin Adega, Julian Paul, and Kaiser Ho. Thank you all so much, and thank you to all of my patrons who enabled me to make this work. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.